welcome everybody to round two of the Gunslingers Tag Team Tournament. You see the championship there on the right and our bracket heading into the second round. So let's take a look at our matchups. We have Fight and Flight, Vice and SDC. Now if you remember, they were pulled the number one seed and were given a bye into the second round. So this is gonna be the first time we are seeing them. They are taking on the Rock and Rap, excuse me, Rock and Rap Connection, the Savage John Robb and Ryan Adams. Now those two gentlemen, they got to where they are by defeating Tropical Storm Romance, Daniel Storm, who is new here to SWF and Lance Romance. Following that matchup, we have the Fallen Kingdom, Bruiser Brad and Malcolm Black, taking on the Dogs of War, Jay Wolf, your Maverick champion, and Sons of Carnage member, Ryan Riley. Now, the Fallen Kingdom got to where they are by surprisingly beating Siler Jordan and James Frost. Every time a pin was made, Siler Jordan was there to break that pin up just until the last second and he was unable to reach it. So the Fallen Kingdom got to the second round that way. Dogs of War, Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley actually beat Sons of Carnage, James Gaines III and Jesse Newman. Ryan Riley had to fight his teammates, but all is fair in love and war, right? So. Moving right along, Fallen Kingdom and Dogs of War taking on each other. They will face the winner of Fight and Flight and Rock and Rap Connection. Moving on, Los Welsh, a team that uh, didn't have high hopes for itself and not really too many people had high hopes for it to begin with. They ended up beating Elliot Collins and Hunter King, Elliot and the King. They defeated them in the first round to get to here to face Ebony and Ivory. Now this is my uh, sleeper team of this tournament. Omari Williams and Jackson Montgomery. They ended up beating Kid Hades and Lord Draven and Darkness Falls. So Ebony and Ivory, Jackson Montgomery's fired up about this. Omari Williams, not so much. So I'm interested to see how this match turns out between Jackson Montgomery, Omari Williams, and Los Welsh, uh, Alex Corzo and Mason Foster. And then rounding out this tournament, The Birth brought in just for this tournament and then we'll continue to be part of SWF. Keith Alexander and Coda Fish taking on Leo in the Sleeves. Now, the uh, birth actually beat Money Talks, which was Brett Storm and Duke Zenda. Duke Zenda mentioned on Twitter he played this matchup the way he, he thought was necessary due to the fact that he is our Lone Star Champion. You don't want to injure your Lone Star Champion. So that kind of went back and forth between Brett Storm and uh, Duke Zenda. And then Leo and the Sleeves ended up beating the Freaks, Evelyn Reeves and Zach Graves. Leo McKay and the Sleeves, of course, being the Australian madman, Seb Abbott, your former Maverick champion. So we have lots of stuff going on here tonight. We have Four great matches before we get down to two matches. Now, um, if this is going on too much, we'll separate this into a third night. But let's see. We're going to kind of randomize this here. And we're going to start this thing off with Coda Fish and Keith Alexander, the birth, taking on Leo McKay and Seb Abbott. Leo in the sleaze. Let's get to it. Well, here we go, folks. New Orleans, Louisiana, night two of Deuces Wild. And we randomized these matches to see who would start first. Look at this psychopath. Making their way to the ring. And as I mentioned, having uh, defeated Money Talks and Duke Zenda and Brett Storm, this man, this is it's too much. It's too much. Coda Fish and Keith Alexander, the birth. Now, they were part of SWF last season. I've definitely made their mark in call. I'm looking to do the same here in SWF. Fired up. Keith Alexander on your left. Coda Fish on your right. They are ready to get this thing going. 
Now, a couple of things I'm interested to see in this uh, tournament is people like the Birth that we brought in to be a part of this tournament and ultimately be a part of SWF. What if they win? What if Los Welsh wins and they, they didn't even want to be a team? What if Ebony and Ivory win? Some of these teams that um, are established, like the Fallen Kingdom, uh, the Birth, uh, some of them that were already knocked out, some of the Carnage, Thriller, and the Clutch. We know those guys can work well together. But what about these teams that were just kind of put together? Leo and the Sleaze, Ebony and Ivory, Los Welsh, the Rock and Rap Connection. They, they got with each other on Twitter and decided they were going to be a team. But they were still kind of just put together, right? So what happens with these teams that are established take on teams that were just put together for this tournament. Leo and the Sleaze taking on the Birth, for example. It's uh, I'm, I'm quite interested to see how this turns out. But Leo McKay, we know, is one of the toughest men in SWF. Now, Leo McKay has been a part of SWF for quite some time and hasn't always had the, the best of luck. And that still rings true. Here, uh, not including this tournament, Leo McKay currently holds the the most losses and the least amount of wins. He's 0-4 right now. Uh, Ryan Adams, Lance Romance, Elliot Collins 0-3. Malcolm Black, Hunter King, and even Seb Abbott and James Gaines the third are 0-1. So that's a lot of star power at the bottom of the uh, rankings with. Leo McKay and Seb Abbott uh, having five losses between them and no wins, minus this first because uh, you know this tournament is a special one-off tournament just to crown our tag team champions. I'm excited to see and wow, Leo McKay starting things off and look how small he is. So to get up that high is something. Keith Alexander pushing Leo away and clotheslines him right into the corner. Oh man, the quickness of Keith Alexander. And Leo McKay's no quit attitude. He is just all about fighting, taking the fight to his opponent. He's not gonna give up unless absolutely necessary. Into the corner he goes, he's gonna tag in Seb Abbott here. Look at this. Oh, double super kick to Keith Alexander. Abbott in the ring, the fans are booing. Oh, big shot to the midsection. Get off me, says Seb, and he hits him with a forearm. My goodness. Big shot there. Big overhand rights. Body shots into the midsection. Keith reverses it into the corner. Smart move gets him out of that corner, and now we're going to tag in Coda Fish. From one side of the ring to the other. Boom, big shoulder block. And then backing it up. Oh man, double headbutt there. And as soon as this one on one, Seb gets back in control here. Now, Seb Abbott, if you're just joining us, as I said, was our former Maverick champion. He defeated, or he was defeated by uh, Jay Wolf. So, what if we see that happen? What if we see Leo and the Sleaze going on to face? Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley. Seb might get his actual revenge. Um, as you saw on the previous episode of Shootout, Seb wasn't letting Jay Wolf get away from his his obligation against Evelyn Reeves. But oh geez, working that arm of Seb Abbott now. Coda into the headlock. Looks like he's gonna take Seb over to his corner. Oh, but Seb able to get out of it in no man's land right now. And he's going to send Coda into his corner. Very smart move, keeping him away from his tag team partner. Leo coming in now. Drop toe hold, elbow to the lower back. And he's unable to get to his partner. Leo's got him hooked up here. Oh, man, what a spinning neck breaker that was by Leo McKay. And we saw this before against Evelyn Reeves and 
Zach Graves just stretching out the chest area. Leo look, looking around. Uh-oh. Man, this crowd is really booing. My goodness. Are they not happy with the match itself? Are they not happy with these people? Who knows? Uh-oh. We know what's coming here. Leo is on the apron. Through the ropes. Into a neck breaker. And I thought he was going for the pin, but, he, but no. Shot to the arm there. And Leo taunting. And these fans are, are letting these guys have it. My goodness. Into the ropes now. Look at Leo DDT as he floats all the way around. And he's going to stop Coda from getting over to Keith Alexander. Kick to the midsection. And now we're about to see it. Rolling the dice and Coda Fish is busted open. He gets down. Oh, and just on one count, it looked like maybe his foot was under the rope. Seb going over there to get Keith out. Oh! Leo went for a roll of... Spinning clothesline and Coda able to get out of it. Not able to get Leo though over to his corner. Leo's gonna send Coda falling right behind him in a forearm, right to the chin. And dragging Coda Fish over to his corner, bringing in the Australian madman and Seb Abbott. But Coda is aware. He has got to get. Alexander back in this matchup. Oh, geez. Shots to the midsection. Coda Fish really using a lot of time to get over to his own corner. Seb throws him down. Uh-oh. He's gearing up the big fist and it right across that open wound of Coda Fish. Snap neck move there from Seb. He's going to pull Coda up to his feet. Ducks. Oh my. Big low blow from Seb Abbott. And the fans let him know how they feel. Good lordy. Oh, Seb going for the clothesline from hell and he gets reversed into DDT by Coda Fish. He has got to get to his tag team partner if they want any kind of Oh man, a pile driver. Any kind of chance in this matchup. Coda has been in way too long. He is busted open. He is bleeding. But he doesn't look like he's given up. Seb Abbott stumbles to his feet. Coda Fish now. Big super kick right to the face. The ref gets down to count and Leo breaks up the pin. Keith Alexander tries to come in. No. Double teaming on Leo. And he sends Leo over the top rope. And Coda sends Seb over the top. Leo and the Sleeves are out laying on the mat. Leo getting to his feet. Coda, oh, Coda goes for a drop kick. Oh, and hits Seb with an elbow. You see Leo right there. That could be a precarious position. Seb getting that arm worked over, but shots to the midsection. The ref at the count of four, and a running elbow puts Keith Alexander on his back, and a knee to the gut. They're at six now, and Coda's gonna send Seb back into the ring. And now we see, well, I was gonna say Coda going to tag his partner, but it doesn't look that way. A figure four type move to Seb Abbott, and he's holding that knee. Coda's gotta get out of this matchup, and now he does. Keith Alexander now coming in. Probably the freshest man in this matchup. Sends Seb across the ring. Grabs him by the arm and Seb lands a big right hand. Uh-oh. Look at this. Flapjack from Seb. And he raises his hand in looking for some kind of admiration from the crowd and he is not getting it. Double clothesline there. Off the ropes. Big drop kick or calf kick there from Seb. Picking up. Oh, boom. There's another 
Big low blow. Seb now going for the pin. Nobody coming in to stop this and a kick out at two from Keith Alexander. Kick to the back now. And Seb going for it again here. Huge clothesline. Knocks Keith Alexander down. And that's it. Leo and the Sleaze have knocked off the berth. My goodness. An amazing matchup from these two guys. And they did a great job of keeping Coda Fish out of the match. Or, or excuse me, in the match. And it shows here as they get the victory. Seb Abbott with a big clothesline. Leo and the Sleaze moving on to the semifinals. Well, folks, what a match that was, and quite surprising to say the least. Leo and the Sleaze have defeated the Berth, and they are the first team to move on to the semifinals. So let's get into our second matchup here of the night, and it is going to be Los Welsh taking on Ebony and Ivory and Omari Williams, Jackson Montgomery. Here we go, folks. This matchup I am pretty excited for. I'm excited to see what is gonna happen between these two teams. Now, these two, uh, the winner of these two teams, excuse me, the winner of this matchup will, will be taking place against Leo in the Sleeves. So I'm very excited to see one, Los Welsh, since they didn't want to tag the team together to begin with. They could have easily just, you know, laid down and let Elliot and the King get the victory. They didn't do that. So I'm interested to see what happens here. No nonsense, business only, coming down to this ring to get this thing underway. And then Ebony and Ivory, where Jackson Montgomery would have been happy teaming up with a mop, where Amari Williams um, wasn't too enthusiastic about it, but they came in, they got the victory over Kid Hades and Lord Draven, which it's crazy to me that these teams that don't want anything, that didn't choose to be a team, end up winning matches and end up moving further and further. Round one, round two. It's insanity. Amari Williams and Jack Mo, America's sweetheart, Jackson Montgomery. I'm pumped up about this. So let's see, the winner of this matchup is going to move on and face Leo in the sleeves. So that is a semifinals matchup. We're getting close. We are getting close. Who is going to move on? Who's going to be next? Is it Ebony and Ivory or is it Los Welsh? To be a little biased, I'm rooting for Ebony and Ivory, but we will have to see. Let's get this thing underway. Who is going to start this match off? Let's see right now. It's going to be Alex Corzo and Amari Williams. Now, Alex Corzo, former uh, Rebellion champion, and actually held the Lone Star Championship. Wow, a pin right away from Amari Williams. Held the Lone Star Championship for a, about five days, four days before ended up losing that title to uh, Duke Zenda in a triple threat between himself, Duke Zenda, and Siler Jordan at Gold Rush. But all that behind us, this is what we've gotten here in front of us. Amari Williams taking it to Alex Corzo, and he has got him up on his shoulders. Flapjack, oh, so close to those ropes. Could have hung him out to dry. Mason Foster now in the ring. He is immediately going to get tossed over to Jackson Montgomery. He gets tagged. Look at the... Look at the camaraderie the fantastic the word is escaping me what am I trying to say teamwork I guess moving on Jackson putting the boots to Mason Foster right into his face good lord oh and a headbutt look at look at the belly to belly and a kip up from Jackson Montgomery he is fired up, got him up, and a Samoan drop. Jackson Montgomery, surprisingly quick, 
He can probably move a little easier with those tiny ass little shorts on. He double under her. Look at this. He's got him in a chicken wing. Oh man. My goodness. And now Jackson hooking him up. Look at this move. A type of sharpshooter move. And Mason Foster is able to get out of it. Shot to the back of the head. But it, oh. Clothesline reversal. Now Jackson with the reversal. Sending Mason out to the outside. Look at this. Hanging him up with a neck breaker. And Mason. Oh, looked like he tried to get over to Alex. Nice takedown there. And Mason is going to get over to Corzo. And now it's Corzo with a big knee to the gut of Jackson Montgomery who catches the kick. Dragon screw down to the mat. Corzo really jammed up in that corner. Trying to reach for Jackson Montgomery. Oh, Jackson looked like he was going for a big punch, but ends up catching a knee instead. Stomps now by Corzo. But it looks like Jackson's going to hit him with an arm breaker. And a big overhand shot and a spear. A spear from Jackson Montgomery. Are we? No way. This isn't going to end this quickly, is it? He's got him up. Down with the jackhammer. But his foot might be under the ropes, too. Wow. Jackson looking to end this thing early. He's going to send him send Corzo over. Omari Williams gets tagged in. Man, oh man, that was quite surprising. Nice teamwork here. Omari and Jackson working like a well-oiled machine. Nice scoop slam there. Oh, Mason gets in there. Oh, and he hits Jackson with a dragon screw and sends him rolling out to the floor. Amari now is essentially alone, but if the beginning of this matchup showed us anything, it doesn't look like it's going to matter. Kick to the midsection now. He's going to have, oh man, a pump handle, back body drop. Jackson's back up on the corner. Big reversal clothesline by Corzo. And now look at Corzo working that arm. Oh, geez, he can pull his arm out of socket with a move like that. Corzo's got him up, but, he del but Amari delivers a shoulder block. And look at Jackson. Jackson saying, bring it on. Deadlift from Amari into a German and, and the pin. And Mason Foster breaks it up. And look at Jackson. Oh, my God. Drops Mason right on his head. And Jackson quickly back over to his corner. Shot to the shoulder by Omari. And again, hooking him up and dropping elbows right onto the top of the head of Alex Corzo. And he looks out of it, folks. My goodness. Williams going to send Corzo into the... Oh, man. Corzo dives out of the way. Nice fireman's carry reversal. And look at this. Amari's got Corzo up into a cutter. That could be it for Los Welsh. And it is. And it is after a jackhammer and the powerbomb cutter from Amari Williams. Ebony and Ivory get another victory and they move on to the next round of this tournament to face Leo and the Sleaze. I gotta say, I'm happy about that. Not that I'm not happy to see Los Welsh. This unlikely tag team moving on makes me happy. Your winners, ladies and gentlemen, Ebony and Ivory. Well, folks, two matches left. We've got Fight and Flight taking on Rock and Rap Connection and the Fallen Kingdom taking on Dogs of War. Let's see who is going next. And it is going to be SDC and Vice in Fight and Flight taking on the Savage John Robb and Ryan Adams in the Rock and Rap Connection. Let's get to it.
All right, folks, we are getting closer. This is going to be the first time we see Fight and Flight with as it being Vice, the fight part, and SDC, the flight part of that tag team. Now, as I've mentioned many times, they drew the number one seed, so they got automatically first round by. So this is going to be the first time we are seeing them, which how is that going to play into this as Rock and Rap Connection and John Robb and Ryan Adams have already had a match and they are already primed and ready to go. But Vice and SDC have had the opportunity to watch every single match. So all from the excuse me, from the outside looking in. So it might appear that John Robb and Ryan Adams have the advantage, but these guys have been studying every match and they didn't know who they were gonna face in the end, whether it was gonna be Rock and Rap or Tropical Storm Romance. Once they found out, then the tape started. The, the tape studying started. And here we go. Ryan Adams on your left. And Rock, or excuse me. I came up and I started ringing it. The Savage John Robb on your right. Boom, they are ready to go and fired up. I love this tag team. Uh, this is probably one of my other dark horses. Not really dark horses. I guess I should say other favorites. These two guys got together on Twitter and, uh, and formed this team. Now, John Robb's having a hell of a season so far. Undefeated. Where Ryan Adams, unfortunately, is winless, I believe. Um, so the the team up of these two really surprised me, but I do I do like it quite a bit. Now SDC is two and one. Vice is two and two. Uh, not that win records really play anything into these things, but John Robb is going to start this thing off against Vice, and they're going to hook up center of the ring. And Rob, quick, quick with the earnage. But Vice, quick again with that shoulder block reversal. Now SDC, uh, probably one of the favorites to move on in the Lone Star Championship tournament. And honestly, SDC and Vice faced off in the second round of that tournament where Vice um, actually lost. SDC got the victory there. Um, SDC, of course, went on and ended up losing to um, Duke Zenda. But, with all that said, these guys formed a team. Good Lord, John damn near threw Vice out of the ring. With all that said, they put their differences aside, Vice and SDC, and decided to form Fight and Flight. Not Fight or Flight, it's Fight and Flight. Flight, fight, and I know I'm, I'm saying it. I don't know. And now they've teamed up to win this tag team tournament. But John Robb now, oh, big kick to the face and a shot to the back. And Vice now looks like he's going to be getting John Robb over to his corner. A snapmare there and a kick to the back. So far, the team that can keep the other team from tagging, they're winning. And they're doing it flawlessly. They're doing it well. So John Robb, nice reversal there. Look at this. Oh, man, drops SDC right on his head. He's going to pick him up and sling him over into his corner. And tags in Ryan Adams. Here we go. Uh-oh. He's got him up. And with the help of John Robb and a huge... Sit out power bomb. Good lord. <clears throat> nice move there. Oh, and a big jumping knee right to the chin of Ryan Adams and a moonsault headbutt type move from SDC. Interesting to see there. And now SDC, look at this mod look at this dragon sleeper here. The headless body, it looked like. Oh, and a kick to the back. Ryan Adams able to get out of that fairly quickly. Knees to the back as SDC comes running in, but he delivers his own knee to the back. 
and a side leg sweep to Ryan Adams. Oh, it looked like Ryan might have been trying to get over to his partner. Nice move there to get out of that. And he does. He's going to hit. <coughs> excuse me. He's going to head over and tag in John. Oh, blocked by SDC. Kick to the midsection. SDC sends him across the ring and a knee to the chest, but it doesn't knock him down. Wow. An elbow to the face of John. And Falcon Arrow by SDC. Uh-oh. We saw this plenty of times. Oh, he sidestepped the knee. And he gets a drop kick but doesn't get knocked down that time again. And here we go. Oh, a reversal by SDC into a bulldog. My goodness. And now SDC looks to be trying again with this knee, and he lands it this time. Quickly goes for the pin. He might be blocking Vice from making a, a, a stop here. And Vice with the STO. My goodness. It's just going to leave Ryan Adams in the ring here. This submission move to John Robb. What is going on? Ryan Adams not going to stop this thing. And he finally just lets go. And John Robb holding his throat. My goodness. Into the corner now goes Robb. Oh, boy. And this time it's Vice doing the flying. Reversal. And he gets out of it, but he catches a clothesline. And quickly back down to the mat goes Robb. Oh, and European uppercut gets out of that one. Rob's going to send Vice over Reversal. into the corner, and Ryan he Adams it, but he gets tagged line. in. Quickly back <clears throat> down to the mat. Go. Oh, big oh, body European splash. Gets out of that He's going to follow that up. Oh, man. Send Vice over into the, corner the teamwork Adams, there, and he goes for the pin, but SDC blurt breaks it up. What an interesting double team move that was. Knee right across the right arm, the right bicep there of Vice. And now Adams working over, oh, working over Vice's arms. Uh-oh, look at this, got him up. Oh, nice single leg, or single arm there. Vice trying to crawl over to SDC and it's not happening. Oh, shots to the shoulder. Oh, oh man. Arm breaker into a back body drop. That was an interesting, nice, innovative move there from Ryan Adams. And he's going to send Vice into the corner hard, and he comes out face first. And it looked like Ryan Adams giving Vice a little bit of hope as he crawled towards his corner, but abruptly stops that from happening, and the stomps commence right across the chest of Vice. Big chop. Knocking Vice down, and this might be it for fight and flight. Big discus clothesline, and he's going to go for the pin. Dead center of the ring, and SDC breaks it up. The ref is knocked down, though. Kick to the face by Vice. Oh, no. Vice stumbles down to the mat. Maybe not quite here all the way into the corner now and a shoulder block to the lower back of Vice and Ryan Adams is back in control look at this got him up and face first goes Vice he's going to drag him out to the center of the ring smart move there and oh knees right to the outside thigh area That'll make it hard to walk, that's for sure. But Vice with a jawbreaker sends Ryan Adams stumbling back. He's going to send him into his corner. And SDC coming in. Big shots to the gut right there. And over the top rope goes Adams and down onto the floor. Tagging in SDC was a smart move. Vice, Vice might have been out of this matchup at any moment. Oh, nice reversal by Adams, and he hits him with a suplex. 
Adams, though, not in the greatest part of town. Oh, bouncing SDC off the ring steps. Big right hands and a reversal. Oh, man, he is slamming him hard into that, uh, into that apron. Back into the ring now is Adams as the ref hits seven. Adams started towards his corner, but SDC stopped that kick right to the jaw. Oh! Oh! Out of nowhere! The knee! One! Two! And a kick out as John Robb might have been late getting to that. And quickly, SDC hooks in the submission hold. John Robb's not coming in. And that is it. Ryan Adams has tapped out. And SDC advice, fight and flight, move on to the to the semifinals. My goodness, that was quite the match. And while I'm disappointed to see the Rock and Rap Connection go, this was a hell of a match. Great job to your winners, fight and flight, vice and SDC. Well, folks, here we go. The last matchup of the second round. It is the Fallen Kingdom and the Dogs of War. Bruiser Brad and Malcolm Black taking on Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley. Let's get into it. Let's see who is going on to face Vice and SDC. And our final matchup of the second round, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Fallen Kingdom, Malcolm Black and Bruiser Brad making their way down to the ring. Now it seems as we always end up coming back to Bruiser Brad and Jay Wolf. That, how does that end up happening every single time? Maybe it's just because they're giants and they're they're meant to fight forever. I don't know. I don't know, but Malcolm Black and Bruiser Brad here tonight taking on Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley. The team of Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley was put together after uh, pretty much everyone else was placed on a team, and these two guys were the only ones left. And as I said, everybody in SWF was put on a team. Duke Zenda, our Lone Star champion, and Jay Wolf, our Maverick champion. The Dogs of War. Look at this tiny, tiny belt. I said it last time when uh, they faced off against Sons of Carnage. This championship belt is like mini on this giant body of Jay Wolf. And Ryan Riley sees Sons of Carnage um, hoodie there, hoodie vest, where he had to take on his teammates. He had to take on his brothers and ended up defeating them. So now it is Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley. And Jay is cranked up, looking to become the first ever double champion in SWF. That has never happened before. There's never been a double champion. And Jay Wolf looks to be the first person. Duke Zenda looked to be the first person, but was defeated in the first round by the birth. Jay Wolf and Bruiser Brad. It only makes sense that these two monsters would start things off. And Jay, big, good lord, turning Bruiser Brad inside out. Now, Brad with a shot to the midsection. Big knee to the gut. And a backbreaker and a side rushing leg sweep. It looked like Brad was going for a big chop or something like that, and Jay interrupted that. Stomp right to the face. Listen to these fans. My goodness. They are not having this match. I mean, I can't say I blame them. Brad and Jay, I mean, it's a match done a million times. And here we go. Wolf now bringing Brad over to his corner. And he tags in. 
Ryan Riley. These teams are very similar in that they have two monsters. And then Ryan Riley and Malcolm Black are roughly the same size. Malcolm Black is uh, more apt to go to the top rope, but these are these teams are fairly similar. And Brad now, look at the boot right into the face of Riley. Oh man, all that weight coming down right on your lower back. He's gonna drag Ryan out away from the ropes and dropping that up big body on his arm into the turnbuckle goes Riley and he kicks himself out of there and now Riley's got Brad by the head and he's gonna snap mare him over oh man Brad's head I'm I think I mentioned this in the last one when he took on uh, James Frost and Siler Jordan Brad's head it's like the size of these guys' torso. Jesus, he's got a massive dome. Malcolm Black now in the ring. Big shots. Followed by a form. Whoa! That came out of nowhere. Fantastic move by Ryan Riley. And now Jay Wolf is in the ring with Malcolm Black. Headbutt. Oh! He's got him up. Oh, nice reversal though from Malcolm Black. He delivers a DDT. Holy cow. Black now sending Wolf into the corner and a clothesline puts down the big man. And now stomping away at the kidneys. Big boot right to the chin. Before pinning that arm back and going. Oh, look at that. Pressure points, folks. And knees to the back by Malcolm Black. Stomping now on Jay Wolf, and he's going to put him up. Look at the size there. It's like a monkey wrestling a bear in there. And Wolf, of course, gets out of that, taking Malcolm Black down to the mat. And he's going to have him up on his shoulders in the torture rack position. Oh, my gosh. Just throwing him, just dumping him like a bale of hay. In comes Ryan Riley now. Kick to the midsection. And no. Oh, big kick to the face. It looked like Malcolm Black had that one scouted. But Ryan Riley was just a step ahead and a nice spinning forearm there from Malcolm. Going to get Ryan up to his feet. Got him up and drops him hard down onto his head. And standing over him like a gargoyle perched on a building before finally deciding to pick him up. Pullback neck breaker. Oh my gosh. Riley slides out of the way there. Big shot to the midsection. And he is going to take Black over to the ropes. Oh, Black's going to send him over the top. And Riley hangs on. Black brings him right back in with that nice hip toss into the ring. Very good job from Black. Bringing Riley up to his feet. Black is all about these neck breakers. Oh, hooked the arm behind him and dropped him directly on that arm using his own body weight. Into the corner now goes Black. And Ryan Riley up to the top with a Hurricane Rana. Fantastic move from Ryan Riley as he does a little taunting. He's going to drag Black up to his feet and hit him with a shot to the throat. Elbow. Following it up. Into the corner goes Riley. But Black, oh, catches a kick right to the ear. Back in the ring he goes in a back elbow by Riley. And a Riley plex. And now he's gearing up. He has gearing up. And if he can hit this, it might be over. And a big spear. Brad coming in though, and he dumps right on top of Riley. Wolf, good God Almighty! Jay Wolf just threw Bruiser Brad over his head, and now Brad is on the outside. 
And another Hurricane Rana delivered to Malcolm Black. Holy Toledo. Riley gets him away from the ropes. Delivers a big knee right to the elbow. That was insanity. I, I cannot believe Jay was able to do such a thing. And look at this. Drops Riley onto his head and quickly goes for the pin. One, two, and no Riley kicks out. And now Black sending Riley into the corner here with a reversal, though. Uh-oh. What is Riley doing? He's on the complete other side. Through the ropes and a DDT to Malcolm Black. What a move there by Ryan Riley. As he is trying to get Malcolm Black back into the ring. Kick, no. Oh my God. Kick right in the back of the head with a huge roundhouse. The ref up to five. Blocking the calf kick is Black. And Black's going to send Riley back into the ring here before the ref gets to seven. And here we go, another one of those neck breakers right in front of Jay Wolf. And he goes for the pin. Probably not the smartest idea. Jay, though, big headbutt by Bruiser Brad, and he gets tossed to the side. And now Riley being tossed into the corner with Jay Wolf there on the outside. Look at Bruiser Brad, but Wolf reverses it. Oh boy. And Wolf. Well, what's Malcolm Black doing? Oh, geez. What is Malcolm Black doing up there? Into the ring comes Jay Wolf. Coast to coast, and Ryan Riley has been busted open. As both men writhe around on the floor, Black is first to his feet. Brad is in no way to get tagged. Another neck breaker from Malcolm Black, and Brad finally gets in position. The tag to Wolf is, has happened. Huge clothesline. Oh, and he missed. Jay Wolf misses. Kick. Oh, geez. And he could probably miss because of Malcolm Black is so short. That Jay just went right over the top of him into the corner now. Look at the strength of Malcolm Black and he leans forward. Oh, geez. Double stomp right to the gut. And then another one put 500 pounds right on the midsection of Jay Wolf. Jay sets him up reverse DDT. Ryan Riley on the outside though. And a big headbutt right to the uh, upper eye socket area of, Brad, of Bruiser Brad. He's going to throw Brad into the corner. Nobody there, though. But it doesn't matter to Brad. I mean, to Jay, excuse me. Running Bulldog puts Brad face first into the mat. And it looks like Jay has got this under control. A swinging power slam. We saw that a few times against Evelyn Reeves. And a dump right on the arm there what has he got in mind here working the leg and now working the crowd this crowd is hating these guys back body drop by bruiser bread oh I thought maybe he might have been going for a tag but wolf delivers a back body drop of his own and a kick to the back And now Jay Wolf putting the big boot right to the midsection of Bruiser Brad. Wolf trying to catch his breath now. And another swinging power slam to the 500 pounder. Dead center of the ring. He goes for the pin. Both guys come in now. Malcolm Black breaks it up. And look at Riley catches him with a dragon suplex. Full Nelson German, face first. Goes Jay on to Brad now. And he's gonna send Brad into the corner. Uh-oh, reversal there from Bruiser Brad and another 
from Wolf. Riley, what are you doing, brother? Shouting out a warning, it looks like, to Malcolm Black. And here comes Jay. That big spike right to the head of Bruiser Brad. And now, oh, Brad's arm is under the rope. Two, is this still going to go? And it does. Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley have defeated the Fallen Kingdom. My goodness. They are moving on to face SDC and Vice in the semifinals. Four teams are left, folks. And you're looking at one of them. Dogs of War, Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley. Well, there you have it, folks. The last four teams in this tournament, Fight and Flight, Vice and SDC, are going to take on Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley and the Dogs of War. And Ebony and Ivory, Omari Williams and Jackson Montgomery takes on Leo in the Sleaze, Leo McKay, and Seb Abbott. I am super pumped up because one reason. None of these teams were teams before this tournament. And that, that excites me. I'm really pulling for Ebony and Ivory here, but with Jay Wolf in the mix, it's hard to, it's hard to really pick a winner. And then Fight and Flight and Leo in the sleeve, both have guys in Vice and Leo McKay that will just do anything to win. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out. We're gonna end this for night two. And coming up in night three, we will have these two matches plus the championship match to determine the first ever Gunslingers champions.